All right, welcome back, guys. In another tutorial, we talked about merge content processor. This one, we're gonna continue on the same merge trend. So we're gonna talk about merge using record reader. In this case, we have a processor called merge record. This processor uses record readers and record writers for him to do the merging. We have to do it, just click on it. You can either create a new service and we have a list of available controller services for, rec re for reading records. Same for the writer. We have a list of them as well. And if we navigate and we look at the definition they carry he, I left them all as default so he's going to infer the incoming schema the parser is going to be this particular parser two of them Jackson and Apache Commons the custom the CSV format is going to carry custom format with a T with a comma separated value and the record server is going to be a new line and we're going to leave it as it is and the same for the record that writer so the record set writer is gonna um, i haven't done anything to it i just created it and, in, and enabled it the by default it will come with inherit record schema before we start i like to say that you will find the template in my github repository and there's a link in the description and also if you guys got questions or you stuck make sure you join our discord channel where we talk in depth nifi and other data engineering topics when you're going to import the template, make sure that you fix this issue here. So basically, at the first import of the template, you will have to enable all the controllers. So the way you do it, click right and go enable all controller services. Just wait for a couple of seconds, do a refresh, and now we can see that it's enabled. So let's go ahead and explain the options in the merge record. So basically the merge record will have to receive an incoming data stream that he will pretty much parse it using a record reader. In our case, we're going to have a sample CSV and then we're going to write it back with another record writer which is a CSV record set writer. The merge strategy is going to be beam packing algorithm or we have defrag, which I've covered those strategies and explained what they mean in our previous tutorial. I'll put the link in the description for the reference for those who are interested. We also have a correlation attribute that we're going to use in this example. The correlation attribute will pin together um, incoming data flows that have the same correlation ID. The attribute strategy we're going to leave it as it is, keep all unique attributes. And this is in regards to the attributes that the flow file carry. And for this example, we're going to use the minimum number of records in the bin of 10 and a maximum number of 10. We're going to leave the minimum bin size as default or the maximum as well. We're not going to touch it. And we're not going to play with the max bin age. And in the first example, we're going to use a maximum number of bins of one let's go ahead and view the data set we're going to use for this example so we have two flow two generate flow files that will generate similar data set so the first one has this format it's a csv uh, type uh, let's say flow file that has a header and some values we see you have three columns with three values and the other one will have the same columns basically the same schema but a different set of values so we have three rows here and one in the previous one. And you remember we had a min number of records of 10. So that implies we have to have three of these and one of these for the merge to happen. In order for the merge to happen uh, using the merge record, we must have the same incoming schemas. So if I were to run this once, give it, put it here and also run the merge record, we can see nothing happens because the minimum record strategy is not satisfied. We only have one record there. So let's add, now we got three. Again, nothing happens because we have a total of four records. Add another one. Now we have a total of seven records. Again, nothing happens. The moment we're gonna run the next one, we see that the merge goes through because we have a total of 10 records equal what about when it has the same schema but it has a different correlation attribute so let me go to this uh, generate flow file and here we can see that we have an attribute added here this attribute is going to be the attribute that we're going to use it in the correlation id and i give it a value of one so if we go inside the merge record we have that this id will be the correlation attribute 
And in my second generate flow file, I have the same ID, but with the value of two. So let's see what happens. Let's add some data here. So let's say we're going to add three rows and another three and another three. Basically, we have nine rows in the queue. You're just waiting for a new one to trigger the merge. And what do you think is going to happen now when we're going to run this? We can see a merge happen. Though we had a different correlation ID, but we still have one record here and one record on the other side. What happened? I put a note here. Whenever you have a merge record with a single bin, he's not able to maintain multiple data sets in the queue. So he will expel from the queue the record that came first. So in this case, if you look at the merge bin here, we're going to have nine records. So we have nine records and the new generated record from this flow file from this generate flow file is going to still wait in the queue. And that's another thing. We cannot actually see the queue because this flow file was already allocated to the bin. If you want the way you can see it, you have to stop the merge record and now you can list the queue if we look inside the flow file we can see that this is what came from the second generate flow file and the attribute for the correlation in this case it's two so let's go ahead and add another bin now and observe again what happens and a second bin apply and let's do the same thing start the processor so now we have nine records coming from this generate flow file with a correlation id of one and we're gonna add another record from here if you remember last time with a single bin you already forced the merge but now he's not forcing the merge because the correlation id do not match so if we look in the queue you will see that the last record here will have an attribute id of two and the other three they have an attribute of one so this merge will not go through unless we're gonna add a new record with the same correlation id to fill up that 10 records uh, requirement if you see here we just added we have them in the queue the moment we start the merge records one uh, a grouping of flow files will be merged and the leftover will be again from this uh, generate flow file that has a different correlation id what happens if we would merge the same number of columns but with different column names so if you look in this example we have column one column two column three and this one has column one one column two two column three three basically the same uh, number of columns and we have the same correlation id well in this example as before if the schema does not match he will he will not merge them so let's see what happens so let's add here um three flows right you remember we had three of three times nine let's start this one we can see nothing happens nothing get merged and now let's add one of this it has the same number of columns and they're sort of similar in name but the schema does not match because the header of the schema must match equally with the other incoming flow files for him to be able to merge it so this is a short introduction of how you can use the merge record it's a very powerful processor and i highly recommend to use this one uh, as compared to a basic uh, merge content which is more compute intensive and memory intensive. If you guys enjoyed this tutorial, like and subscribe. There's more material coming your way.